Hey boys and girls, we're going to go ahead and read uh, chapters 8, oh sorry, 8, yikes, we're not there yet, chapter 5 and 6, uh, and when we left off last time, um, Junie B, hmm, she has it in her mind that she should win and she's going to be the best at the carnival games, at the, at the school carnival night. And uh, I'm a little worried about Junie B because things don't usually go as planned for her. So when we last read Junie B, she was practicing around the house, remember? And, um, and mom had to come in and say, Junie B, you know, it's just about having fun. You don't, don't be thinking you're gonna be winning all these games, just have a good time, uh, right, right, right? And Junie B kept saying, right, right, right. And then inside, she says, um, she's thinking, I'm going to win for sure. So I'm a little worried as we start chapter five. Ready? Chapter five is called Stupid Dumb Carnival Games. Oh, here we go. Carnival night was Friday after dinner. Daddy drove me and mother there in the car. Only not baby Ollie, because he's, he's a fussy budget, that's why. I unbuckled my seatbelt and looked out the window. Hey, I said, look at all the lights on the playground. It looks like a real alive carnival out there. I looked harder and guess what? There are clowns at this place. Only don't let them get near me, okay? Cause clowns are not normal, I think. Hey, there's my bestest friend named Lucille, I yelled. I hurried out of the car. Lucille, hey, Lucille. Look, it's me, Junie B. Jones. I'm at carnival night. Me and Lucille run at each other. She had red hearts painted on her face. Look at me, Junie B. Look how beautiful, beauteous I am, she said. I just got my face painted by Mrs. Hall, the art teacher. She puckered her lips at me. Chew my lips? My Nana put red lipstick on them so they would match my hearts. Lucille's lips were shiny and slickish. I tried to touch the bottom one, but Lucille said, don't smudge me. Just then, mother and daddy caught up with me. Daddy had bought tickets for all, of, for all the carnival games. Ready to get started, he said. Yes, I said, because I've been waiting for this exciting evening my whole entire career. I run and run till I found my most favorite game. Its name was putting the golf ball. There were a, there was a long green carpet there. The carpet had the had a little hole with the flagpole in it. And also there was a man holding golf clubs. I ran up to him. Guess what? I'm going to win a prize at this thing, I said, cuz I've been practicing my putting very hard. Good for you, said the man. Then he gave me a golf club and he put a tiny white ball in front of me. It was the tiniest ball I ever saw. I looked at it for a real long time. Then I tapped on him. I mostly just put grapefruit, I explained. The man did a frown. Hurry up, okay? There are other children waiting, he said. Yeah, only I can use a dinner roll. Yeah, only I can also use a dinner roll, I told him. Please, he grouched. Just hit the ball. And so that's how come I felt pressure inside me. And I swing the golf club way far back. And I hit the tiny ball very hard. It zoomed right off the green carpet. Then it flied in the air. And it bounced and bounced. And people shouted the word of, ouch. I quick gave the man back his golf club. Then me and mother and daddy rushed out of there very fast. Mother looked upset. Why don't we try a game where she can't actually kill someone, she said. Hey, I know a game where I can't actually kill someone, I shouted, and its name is clothespins in a bottle. I run and run till I found it. Clothespins, please, I said to the lady. She gave me five of them. Then she told me all about destructions. Just hold the clothespins at waist level and drop them in, one at a time, into this milk bottle, she said. She put an empty milk bottle down at my feet. It had a little hole at the top where the milk pours out. 
I dropped two clothespins in the bottle. Oh, drop two clothespins in the bottle and you win a prize, she said. I stared and stared at the little hole. How come that hole is so little, do you think? I asked the lady. I don't know, she said. Just go ahead and start. I scratched my head. Yeah, only I don't even know how cows can squirt their milk into such a teeny thing, I said. The lady tapped her foot. There are other children waiting, she told me. I looked up at her. Have you ever thought about using a bucket? I asked. Just go, she grouched. And so then I felt pressure inside me again, and I hurried to drop my clothespins into the tiny hole. Only every single one of them fell right onto the floor. My eyes got tears in them. See, I said, I told you that dumb hole was too small. Just then a clown saw me being sad and he grinned a giant smile at me. I hided behind mother's skirt. Don't let him get near me, I told her. Only the clown ran right over and he peeked his white face close at me. His teeth were big and yellowish. Back off, clown, I shouted. There we go, <laughs> make sure you can see. Then daddy closed his eyes and mother said the word, oh my. After that, me and mother had a little talk. It was called, no screaming back off clown. Only I'd never even heard of that rule before. My nose got sniffly. <laughs> Carnival night isn't being fun, I said very sad. And so that's how come daddy bought me an ice cream cone and mother bought me a red balloon. Only too bad for me because when she handed me the string, my ice cream dropped on the ground and my balloon string slipped right out of my fingers. I bended my head back and watched my balloon float up to the sky. Then my eyes got more tears in them and I said the word of poop. Chapter six, bullseye. Carnival night was being the worstest night of my life. That's because I kept on losing at every single game. I lost at penny toss, and I lost at ring toss, and I also lost at the stupid fishing booth. Except all you have to do is hang a fishing pole over the table, and somebody puts a toy on your pole. Only I just got a stupid dumb comb and my pole, and that's all. Hey, what kind of stupid dumb prize is this? I said, a stupid dumb comb isn't even a toy because I can't even play with the stupid dumb thing. Daddy sat me down on the bench. Me and him had another talk. It was called, stop saying the word stupid and dumb. And also I have to appreciate my comb. Just then I heard a voice holler at me. Junie B. Jones! Hey, Junie B. Jones! I've been looking all over this place for you. I turned around. It was my other bestest friend, that Grace. She was holding lots of stuff in her hands. Look, Junie B., look at all my prizes. I won a shiny plastic car and some pretty barrettes and a delicious red lollipop and two rubber bugs and an eraser that looks like a hot dog. See them? See all my good stuff? Yeah, so, I said. That Grace did a frown at me. How come you said, yeah, so? How come you're grouchy at me, Junie B? And why are you just sitting here on the bench? I did a mad breath. I'm appreciating my comb, that's why. Don't you know anything, Grace? Just then, Daddy walked me away from that, Grace. And he said, I better shape up, little Missy, or else we're going home right now. Mother told daddy to calm down his blood pressure. We have three tickets left, she said. Let's all take deep breaths and start all over again. What do you think, Junie B? Do you wanna try the sponge throw? That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Then mother held my hand and me and her went to find the sponge throw. And daddy kept on doing deep breaths. The sponge throw was right in the middle of the playground principal was there. He was standing behind a board with a big clown suit painted on front of it. On the inside of a face, there was a round hole cut out in the board and principal's head was sticking out. 
His face and hair were very drippity. That's because kids kept on hitting him with sponges. It looks like the funnest game I ever saw. I hurried up and got in line. Except for just then, something very terrible happened. And its name is that Jim I hate got in line right behind me. Boo, he said. You didn't scare me, Jim, I said. Yes, I did too. No, you did not. Yes, I did too. And anyway, you shouldn't be in this line because girls can't throw sponges as good as boys, he said. Oh, yes, they can too, I said. Because I even practiced this game at my house and I made a bullseye right in my toilet pot. So there, that mean Jim laughed real loud. P.U. Junie B. Joan plays in her toilet, he hollered. So all the other kids started laughing too. Just then, the sponge lady tapped on me. She handed me two soaky wet sponges. Your turn, sister, she said. Only I just kept standing there and standing there because all those meanie kids wouldn't stop laughing. Guess what? I don't even know if I can throw these right now because all the running, the, all the laughing is ruining my self-esteem, I said. Sorry, sis, either throw the sponges or get out of line, the lady told me. And so finally I took a big breath and I aimed my sponge at Principal Baldy's head and I throwed it with all my muscles. Missed him, you missed him, ha 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 ha, saying that Jim I hate. That's how come my temperature boiled over and I quick spun around and I threw the other sponge right at that meanie boy's face. It hit him right in the kisser. Bullseye, I shouted very happy. Then I run out of that place as fast as I could because I was in big trouble, that's why. Junie B. Jones, yelled mother. Junie B. Jones, yelled daddy. I run and I run till I saw the giant moonwalk tent. Then I quick climbed inside of it and I throwed my shoes out the door cause no shoes allowed in there. The moonwalk tent is like a puffy house. You can jump far and wide in that place. I jumped and jumped till sweat came on my head. This is the funnest jumping I ever saw. I said very springy, except for just then the tent lady blew her whistle. Time's up, she yelled. I peeked out the door. Mother and Daddy were waiting for me. They weren't smiling. I think I'll stay in here, I said. Only just then, Daddy came over and he lifted me right out of the door. I smiled very pleasant. Hello, how are you today, I said. But Daddy didn't say hello. He just carried me right back to that mean gym. Then he made me say apology to him and also to his mother. Sorry I throwed a sponge at your meanie boy's face, I said. Dad rolled his eyes way far back in his head. He carried me back to the moonwalk tent again. Get your shoes, he said. We're going home. Yeah, only I just started to have fun, I said. Plus, I didn't even do the cakewalk yet. And it's in my very own room, nine. I told you to get your shoes, he said very grumpity. And so I went to the shoe pile. I could only find one shoe and not the other one. I tapped on the tent lady. Can you help me find the other shoe? See what they look like? They are shiny and black with strap that buckles. Their name is Pat and Leather. Then me and her and mother and daddy looked for my other shoe, but we couldn't find it anywhere. Darn it, I said. Now my feet are ruined. I started to cry a teeny bit. Then daddy smoothed my hair and he said the word, don't worry. You and mother go on to the cakewalk, he said. I'll stay here and find your other shoe. And so then mother holded my hand and me and her walked to room nine with just one pat and no, and no leather. And that is it. We will save chapter seven for tomorrow. Oh my goodness. I kind of feel bad for Junie B. Things are just not going her way. Typical Junie B. Jones, poor thing. She can't get it right, but I think she will in the end. So stay tuned.